Hello, my name's Alessia. I'm gonna be sharing five incidents of sexual harassment. If it isn't already clear, I just wanna put a warning out there that you might be triggered by this. There is a plane. 50% of the population identify as female. 50% of the population is terrified to walk the streets alone. 50% of the population dress in certain clothing to protect themselves. 50% of the population have imagined the look on their family's faces when their body has been found in a ditch. 50% of the population has been blamed for the unwanted attention they have received, accused of asking for it. 50% of the population has called a loved one in fear that someone is following them. 50% of the population have had to abide by an unspoken curfew. 50% of the population are afraid of the other 50% of the population. Women live in a permanent state of fear. Fear that maybe the man walking behind her, maybe the man she's dating, or maybe the man sitting next to her at work will hurt her. This has always been the case. Sarah Everard's tragic death came as no surprise. I've heard her death be described by men as shocking. Like everybody, I'm shocked and appalled about Sarah Everard. And Whilst I can see where they're coming from, I totally disagree. It is terrifying, not shocking. My TikTok page at the moment is filled with videos about sexual harassment. This is a positive thing because increased awareness is apparent, but it is super draining and overwhelming hearing about one of your biggest fears ever since you're a little girl being talked about over and over again online. Anyway, basically what I'm trying to say is if you're a woman and you're feeling overwhelmed and exhausted, I get you, I feel you. I understand. I know everything at the moment is quite scary and it's triggering. Remember, you are completely justified to just take a moment. Switch off your screens, relax, take some time out. You do not owe anyone your stories or your experiences. I'm going to talk about some of my experiences of sexual harassment, but there is one particular quite vivid incident that I don't feel comfortable sharing online and that's completely okay. I felt a bit scared this morning waking up being like, oh, I've got to film this now. Like I've thought about it, I planned it. Um, but I really do think that the more we talk about things and we give evidence that these things are happening, detailed evidence, I think the more, the closer we are to changing things and making things better for women. Let's just get on with it. I had a class with this boy. He um, sat opposite me. Without fail, every lesson, he would slowly rub his foot and he'd like extend his leg and slowly rub his foot all up and down my leg. And like, he'd go right up onto my thigh and he'd, yeah, kind of like caress my leg. And he wouldn't stop until I looked under the table. I actually used to laugh it off because I didn't want to like out him and embarrass him um, or get him into trouble. Really, I just wanted to scream at him. I felt super uncomfortable, invaded, and ultimately he distracted me from one of my favorite classes. So this was my education that he was jeopardizing. The same boy used to purposefully drop his pen under the table. He'd do it like multiple times sometimes in one lesson. So he could go under and then he would look up my skirt. School is actually one of the worst environments for this kind of stuff. It was common at my school for the boys to go around slapping the girls' bums. I think schools and colleges, in the UK at least, have so much work to do to properly protect individuals from sexual harassment and abuse. So another time I was really drunk. It was one of the first parties I'd been to where they had alcohol and I was properly like participating and like drinking. Um, yeah, I drank quite a lot and I didn't know my limits. So yeah, naturally I, uh, I was quite drunk, so I actually kind of passed out, fell asleep um, in this chair in the middle of the party. So everyone was still around dancing and socialising and I just fell asleep. And then I woke up to find this like dark red mark on my neck from where this boy had been sucking on it. I was so intoxicated, so it was even more shocking to wake up to a bunch of my friends laughing and mocking me. One girl. Um, which I'll forever remember actually stood up to this guy in front of everyone full on shouted at him but everyone else just saw me as a joke you know the silly drunk girl and he of course received no backlash whatsoever so many men take advantage of women when they have had too much to drink it's a problem that 
happens so often. I, I've seen it, I've been victim to it myself, particularly at uni. It's a huge issue. In my last video, I spoke about this in detail. One is incapacitated. Maybe they're falling all over the show or they aren't speaking clearly. They can be classed legally as too drunk to consent. Men, if you can't tell, assume she's too drunk and leave her alone. Another time, me and a bunch of close friends were chilling watching Ted the movie. Awful movie. <laughs> This one guy who I actually really fancied at the time asked me to come and sit next to him on this chair and I jumped, um, I jumped at the opportunity to sit next to him. So it was just me and him on this chair and my friends were next to us on the sofa. For the last half an hour of the movie, which felt like it was a lifetime, he kept rubbing his hands all over me and trying to go you know, under my trousers and I kept batting his hands off and pushing him away and going like this. I didn't speak out loud because I didn't want to embarrass him in front of the guys that we were with. In fact, I've silenced myself, my struggles, my discomfort so many times to preserve a man's ego. Actually, the same guy did the same thing to me at a gathering. One of my male friends told me at the end of the night that I needed to share a bed with him because there was nowhere else that I could sleep. He knew exactly what he was doing. I was so tired, I just wanted to sleep. The same man forcibly put his hands all over me again. I kept saying no, he carried on, he was sucking on my neck, like kissing all up my neck, trying to put his hands on my lady parts. I was so tired, I remember being exhausted, but I stayed up for hours. I was worried what he would do if I fell asleep. So I stayed awake on the edge of the bed, curled up with my arms around me, ready to bat him away again. And I did this, I kept pushing him away every time he came in, which was literally like every other minute, um, until he fell asleep. Another time, a guy at uni thought it was funny to comment on my breasts. Whilst literally staring full on at them, he commented on the size of them and asked if they gave me backache. He then like fell about laughing. He didn't look me in the eye during any of this. Not that that would have made any of this okay, but this really made me feel like a powerless bystander. Instead, he looked at all the other people who were sitting on this table with us to see if they were laughing with him. He really made me feel like an object. Disgusting. He was a gross guy who sexually harassed me a few times and my friends. I don't talk to him anymore. I actually have no respect for people who entertain people like him. Men who are so unapologetically sexist, who have an obvious disrespect for women. Don't get me wrong, calling them out um, and telling them what they're doing is wrong and showing them how to behave and what's, yeah, right and wrong is good, it's needed, especially more men telling other men. But in this particular circumstance that the guy I was just talking about, I know many men that are still friends with him, knowing how he treats women, knowing how he's treated me and some of my friends. So yeah, gross. The final incident that I'm going to share happened to me when I was at uni in first year. So I'd just been out clubbing with a bunch of friends. We all decided to leave and we went back to the student hall of residence that we all lived at. Probably like six of us. For an hour or so we chilled and we chatted in this guy's kitchen, one of my friends, one of my close friends kitchen. But I was super tired and I wasn't really feeling it so I just said, um, I just said to everyone, I'm gonna go guys, like, I'm really tired. So yeah, I let them know I was gonna go across to block A. There was block A, B, C and D. They were basically like four apartment blocks all facing each other. A guy who I was there who I didn't really know, he was like a friend of a friend. He like stood up and was like, I'm gonna walk, as I'm gonna go as well, so I'll walk with you. So we left block C um, and started walking in the direction of block A because that's where the main exit to leave the hall of residence was and he, w he didn't live in this hall of residence. So yeah, I just assumed he was gonna come with me and then leave out the main doors. But instead he turned around and started coming towards me and then just kind of grabbed me and started like trying to kiss me on the lips at first and then he just went for other parts of my body like here um, and was very touchy and like grabbed my hips and um, but yeah he tried to like kiss me on the lips so it was just so forced so many times. 
I was literally backed up against this kind of like glass wall, like pushing him away. I'd barely said a thing to him all night. I was clearly tired. And most importantly, I like vocalized my disinterest in him. He forced himself upon me. I told him, no, I'm going to my room. I'm really tired. And he just, he begged to come up with me and come to my room. I said no so many times. So after a while, I was just like, I'm just gonna go. So I unlocked this door to get into the lift that would take me up to my floor. But he like budged past me and ran in through the door into the lift and just turned around and stood and like waited for me to come in with him. I like instantly started to like really panic because I'd had guys like be forceful in terms of trying to get me to kiss them and stuff so many times at uni. That, that didn't panic me that much, but the fact that he wouldn't go away and he had literally forced himself into the lift and I was just saying no and he just stood there smirking at me. I was so lucky that block A um, was also the reception. So just around the corner, there was like the, the security guard guy who was on the night shift. So instantly this guy went and grabbed him out of the lift and like was holding him and escorted him out of the building. Um, yeah, it was such a relief. Oh my God, if he wasn't there, I guarantee it, it the situation would have been so much worse. Oh, it's actually crazy what women go through and super scary how normal it is to have all these stories. It's even more scary that I have to really think about some of these stories to, to remember them all. There are definitely so many more that I can't actually remember, so many. That's how commonplace and normalized these damaging incidents are. These are things that happen to women so often, but so little is done. These men, so often they don't face the consequences, which means it happens often. So women have done all they really can do and just learn to kind of brush it off and put it to the back of their memory and just be prepared for the next situation and hope there is a security guard around the corner that's gonna help you out and stop things from escalating and becoming a really serious, life-changing experience. I was watching a load of videos on sexual harassment on YouTube. There was one woman on uh, Loose Women, I think it was, who said, I've forgotten more than I can remember. And this really resonated with me because it's so true. There is so much work to be done. To the men watching this video, please call out your friends. And to the women who have endured similar experiences to me, I just wanna give you, send you a, a virtual hug. Together we are stronger. Please subscribe, um, it would mean so much to me because I put my heart and soul into this and it is quite hard sometimes filming videos like this but I really want to have these important conversations and spread awareness on things like violence against women. I really hope um, this video has, has done some good of some sort so please let me know if it has in the comment section and stuff but yeah, I'm gonna love you and leave ya. Woo!